Stardust Chapter 19 Stardust Supplemental Files Part 5 Photographs of unmarked fighter craft flying over Denver raise questions over internal security in USA. Senator Goldman issues statement, This is a vast conspiracy at work, and I swear that I will put a stop to it. Unidentified military organizations are just another sign that this country is only a few short steps from tyranny. Riot strike Argentina as dozens of families across the country report family members missing. No signs of struggle or alien attacks were found at any of the residences of the missing persons, and the only known connection between the majority of those reported missing is background in construction and engineering. Warning: Access to this file is restricted to personnel with top secret clearance or above. Attempts to access this file without authorization will be reviewed and be grounds for termination and or prosecution. Distribution of this file may only be done with authorization from CMDR. David Bradford, failure to provide authorization will result in termination and or prosecution. Project ID, Stardust. Project IV, All. Div Lead, Dr. Moira Valen, Dr. Joel Mills, Dr. Kim No, Dr. Frank McKendrick. Attached Files, Original and Translated Copies of Personal Correspondence Received by Twilight on May 2nd, 2015. Analysis of materials received, links to Xenobiology assets, personal notes by Divlead No, supplemental notes by Divlead Valen, Mills, and McKendrick. Personal notes follow. New record, 4.12 a.m., May 2nd, 2015. Twilight just got some mail from home. If this is ever reviewed without the context of all the Stardust notes, I'll explain just how unlikely that last statement is. Twilight is being secure in a lab several stories below ground and is kept under constant surveillance. Nothing enters or leaves the lab without one of the research division leads approving it, and nothing enters or leaves the base without Bradford doing the same. So imagine my surprise when Dr. Valen pages all Stardust staff at freaking 3 in the morning to report some sort of breakthrough. My first thought that went through my head was that Twilight was literally breaking through the lab, as in with her mind, tearing the walls asunder, bull in a china shop, or wait, unicorn in a china shop? Man, it's too early in the morning, I can't think straight. And hey, don't laugh at me, you try being clever this early. Anyway, Joel and I shuffled our way down the lab to find Moira in a similar state. Twilight, however, was wide awake but looked on the verge of tears because of what was in front of her. Nine honest-to-god scrolls had somehow made it from her homeworld to her in this accursed vault containing personal correspondence from her friends and family. The exact contents of these messages will be uploaded as soon as possible since our primary concern right now is how the hell they got in here in the first place. Reviewing the surveillance footage of the habitat shows some sort of distortion appearing in the habitat approximately two feet in front of Twilight. This distortion appears to be a cloud of black smoke that combusts into flames. The footage cuts out for a second, but when it recovers, Twilight is sifting through the pile of scrolls that inexplicably appeared there. Valen Supplemental The phenomenon that deposited this correspondence into Twilight's possession is accurately captured by the surveillance devices. Twilight herself describes the event as being generated through a side effect of dragon fire. This description is literal, as Twilight describes fire-breathing, sentient reptiles native to her homeworld that can, if certain conditions are met, send small objects instantly across long distances so long as it's familiar with the receiver or destination. Unlike teleportation, there is no requirement for knowledge of the distance between points or energy gathering. This is both more or less alarming than standard teleportation. On the other hand, the creature that sent the messages is capable of sending other things that may intentionally or otherwise threaten the safety of the facility and we may have no way of preventing it from reaching Twilight, or at the very least analyzing it before it reaches her. Though on the other hand, the arrival of these messages does not mean Earth's position has been pinpointed by another alien power. Yet. And supplemental. Mills is supplemental. I can't believe Moira's asking me to speculate on the biology of a creature I've never seen that breathes fire to send messages across the universe. Every time I try to form a coherent thought on the subject, I keep thinking, there be dragons here, before thinking about some of the cheesy movies coming out of Hollywood on the subject. <sighs> Dear God, I, I need coffee. And supplemental. I'll be working with Twilight to get the translations of the letters recorded. This will also give our translation algorithms a chance to flex their muscles now that they've got more material to work with. Update, 8.15 AM, May 2nd, 2015. The letters have been translated and attached below, along with my own comments on the contents. After translation of a few of the letters, I called Frank over to see if he could do any sort of handwriting analysis. 
I know that they don't have hands, so just shush. His notes have been attached as well. Also, for the sake of completeness, I've placed links to the corresponding drawings of each letter's author that Twilight drew back in April. Valence Supplemental. Preliminary material analysis is complete on all the letters. What they all share in common is described below, while exceptional materials are described before each of the attached translations. Paper. The paper itself appears to be constructed in the similar manner as ancient papyrus. Pulped plant fibers compose the body of these letters, though more detailed information will become apparent after more thorough analysis is finished. Ink. The standard ink used for this majority of the letters appears to be little more than water mixed with graphite and as yet unidentified thickening agent. Ribbon. The ribbons used all appear to be silk and dyed red with an as yet unidentified organic dye. Each length of ribbon is approximately 12 inches in length. Clip. A clip was in place on each of the letters to secure the ribbon in place and ensure the scrolls stayed closed. The clip itself is made of brass, but the emblem appearing on the clip varies wildly. The majority of the emblems are also made of brass as well. They are approximately the size of a quarter in diameter, while being a half inch thick. Stamp on the top of each is what appears to be a horseshoe. And supplemental. The letters detailed below are listed in that order, that's why I opened them. Once we expressed our interest in their contents, she was more than willing to read them to us so they could be translated. Update. At the end of the day, the translations so far appear to be accurately based on what the algorithm calculates. The last letter continues to defy reasonable explanation, though. The first letter is identified as being written by Applejack and begins below. Howdy, Twilight. Hope this letter finds you well. We've all been worried sick about you since Discord pulled his trick and sent you wherever you are now. Before I say anything else, I want you to know that each and every one of us is doing everything we can to find you, or to make sure everything is just the way you left it when you get back. There's been no official announcement about Discord or your disappearance, but we're specifically told that if anyone asks where you are, then we're supposed to say that you're on a mission abroad to help save Equestria. I know, I'm just a simple pony, but I'm bright enough to realize that the explanation is two bits short of being a flat-out lie. There is just enough truth in it that I can tell it, and still let it be believable, but it still makes me feel right guilty. The worst part is telling Apple Bloom since she can read me like an open book, but she doesn't know when not to pry like Big Mac. In the end, she thinks that you're out being a secret agent for the princesses or something, and I figure that's less terrible than the truth. Now, don't you go worrying about that down talk for me, Sugar Cube. I'm still myself, and Discord never got the chance to cause any mischief. You just concentrate all your worrying and use it yourself to get home. I know that you will make it back to us. I don't lie, remember? Your friends, Applejack. 1. Yes, howdy. Direct translation from Twilight. 2. Bits are apparently a form of currency in Twilight's nation, if not the world. She describes them as something akin to gold coinage used about a century past. 3. Apple Bloom and Big Macintosh are siblings of Applejack. 4. A term of endearment that Applejack has for her friends. McKendrick Supplemental. I never thought I'd be brought in to discuss the handwriting of alien creatures. The writing in this letter is, as far as I can tell, extremely rough. To draw a comparison, the characters when compared to the letters except Rainbow Dash's letter appear rigid and block-like. Either Applejack doesn't really write much, or didn't receive proper writing education, or it just might be a quirk in being forced to write something with her mouth. The pressure to the paper combined with the letter slant can be used as a good indication of emotional state as we go through the letter. The paragraph starting with there's been no official announcement starts to see slanted lettering and increased pressure on the paper, which would seem to support the content of the letter and the writer's distaste for half-truths. Kim says that this particular entity is a paragon of the virtue honesty. Perhaps it's probably not a choice for her, but maybe a compulsion? And supplemental. The second letter is from Rainbow Dash. Hey there, Egghead. Discord must have sent you pretty far away if it's gonna take you this long to come back, right? Like, across the universe or something? Oh, have you seen any aliens? Because that would be so cool. Unless they're mean. In that case, I'd have to come find you and kick their flanks. Of course, you'd probably bore them all to death with a lecture about friendship before I got there. I know you've got more important things to worry about, but I just wanted to let you know that the Equestria games are on hold. Celestia has been locked up in Cancelot looking for you since this whole thing happened and every pony in the world didn't want to start the games without her in the opening ceremony. I was thinking, once you get back, we could all go make sure that the Crystal Empire gets to host the games this time. They really need a break to go their way to get them back on their hooves after that whole somber thing. I've also wrapped up one of our group pictures in this letter, and I expect you to bring it back. 
It's one of my favorites, but I figure you could borrow it for now. I swear, Egghead, when you get back and don't immediately give the pictures back, I'm gonna follow you around with a rain cloud for a week and buck the normal weather schedule. I will see you soon. RD. Number one. Yes, Egghead. This translation is apparently originally derogatory in nature, but it's used more as a term of endearment towards Twilight. Number two. Yes, the word pretty is stretched out like that in the original text, complete with an obnoxious amount of repeated letters. 3. Without context, it might seem like the author of this letter is rather abrasive. Frank has some feedback regarding why this may be. 4. The Equestria games are described as an analog of the Olympics here on Earth. 5. Rainbow Dash is the weather team leader for that area that Twilight lived in back home. As mentioned in previous research notes, Pegasi have the capacity for weather control. Apparently she isn't exaggerating when she said that she could follow someone around with a rain cloud. 6. The letter is signed with initials rather than the full name. McKendrick Supplemental The writing in this one could only be described as sloppy. While the letter written by Applejack has problems, there was a clear effort to make it legible. This letter, however, it's a scrawling mess. The lines of text aren't even straight by any definition of the word, and the size of the lettering tends to vary wildly along with spacing between words and letters. After reviewing the contents of this letter, I also have to comment on the character of the letter itself. Just based on the wording combined with information provided by Twilight, the abrasive wording is actually a subconscious attempt at self-sabotage, or maybe a way to reassure herself that her friends are as loyal to her as she is to them. She's purportedly a paragon of the true virtue loyalty, so she is rather expected to be with her friends, but I suspect that she's painfully aware that her peers aren't held to that standard. Without meeting the subject in person, I can only speculate, but she strikes me as one who covers up her own fear and insecurity with her boasting and showmanship. If my suspicions are correct, that holding the status of Paragon may act as a compulsion to that virtue. It would only compound the issue. And Supplemental. Valen Supplemental. The picture included with this document appears to be made of the same papyrus-like paper that the letter is written on. It's a photo rather than a hand-drawn sketch, but thus far analysis has been unable to determine how the picture was captured on the paper without any of the chemicals we use for our pictures. The subjects of the picture itself are Twilight and the five friends who sent her letters. The background appears to be a town square with one or two-story buildings in the background. No technology higher than our mid-19th century is visible in the picture. Twilight's explanation involved the use of magic, which I'm afraid doesn't really tell us much at this point. And Supplemental. The third letter is from Fluttershy. Hello Twilight, I am so sorry that this happened to you. Had I spoken up to Discord when he was freed, things might have gone differently. This shouldn't have happened, you, you still would have been here and that means that old Discord should be locked in stone. The hill where we freed Discord had been turned into a small castle by Princess Luna to hold Discord, and a lot of the local animals are really upset that the open field isn't really there anymore. Not that I'm criticizing Princess Luna's decision. She did what was necessary to keep us all safe and to keep Discord locked up until the elements are reunited, and then we can punish Discord for good. I don't want to sound mean, but Discord has gone too far this time. I just hope that you can come back soon so everything can go back to the way things were before. Since you probably are curious, I've been stopping by the library to check on Owlicious and Spike. They've been getting along quite well, and I suspect that they came to an agreement in your absence. Spike is doing an admirable job keeping things running, though he has refused to take the title of librarian for himself. He's waiting for you to come back so we can pick up where we left off. I think we all are. I hope you're doing well wherever you are. Please don't ever doubt that we're still looking for you. We will find you and bring you home safely. Always your friend, Fluttershy. 1. The overly apologetic tone of this letter seems to fit with a character described by Twilight, though honestly she sounds like a bit of a doormat. 2. Twilight's pet owl and second assistant Owlicious is at the library that she works at, apparently. McKendrick Supplemental The writing here displayed exceptional penmanship, despite it being done with her mouth. While I couldn't make heads or tails of the characters, I could tell that the person who wrote this is careful about every word they wrote. And with that in mind, combined with information gleamed from Twilight, I tentatively diagnosed Fluttershy with avoidant personality disorder. Her social phobias, extremely limited group of friends, overly kind and forgiving act as well as her preference to the company of animals rather than peers that she isn't friends with all seem to indicate this. From what I understand, she was the victim of bullying at a young age and is extremely attached to Rainbow Dash as a long-time, and likely only, childhood friend. 
This would suggest a bit of a symbiotic relationship between the two. Rainbow Dash needs Fluttershy because her childhood experiences ensure that the latter will always stay loyal to the former. Fluttershy needs Rainbow Dash because that latter is so forgiving of the former's perceived shortcomings and failings. And supplemental. Next is Rarity's letter. Twilight. I cannot express in words how worried I am for you, darling. You just disappeared from the field right in front of Discord and I nearly died of fright. Princess Luna assures that you are alright, and I feel deep down that she is correct, but at the same time, I can't help but worry for you. I'm not the only one who's worried, I mean, all the girls were rather distraught after the events that took you from us, and especially poor Spike. I suppose that should be expected since you're like a sister to him, or perhaps even a mother. You've raised him for most of his life, it's only natural for him to be so concerned. I suspect that he's been preventing his worries from consuming him by throwing himself into work at the library. While I normally approve of such hard work and dedication, it is quite clear that his current state prevents him from taking any sort of break. As such, I've taken it upon myself to borrow him on occasion to help me with one of my little projects. At least, that's what I tell him. It's partially true, I must admit, but it's more to get him out into the fresh air on a somewhat regular basis and have some fun. I'm afraid I can't help him the way that the others do than give him my time, and I am more than willing to give as much as he needs and more until you come back to us. And you will come back to us, I know you will. Celestia is my witness. I will see you reunited even if I have to wring Discord's neck to achieve it. Please, darling, come back soon. Rarity. Number one. In the context of this letter, this seems like an oath to a religious figure in the way that we are familiar with, but Twilight continues to insist that Celestia isn't the subject of religious devotion. McKendrick Supplemental. At first, I was convinced that this was going to be a case of manipulative narcissism, where Rarity's generosity was used to indebt people to her if they wanted her gifts or not, but after looking at the letter and reading the transcript, I'm forced to revisit my initial option. The script is beautifully rendered in flowing formal characters that almost look like calligraphy, and combined with the vocabulary and sentence structure, I'm assuming she is cultured and had a healthy upbringing in. Again, all these evaluations are done purely through secondhand stories, and these limited written materials, but this one kinda gives me the impression that she's well adjusted and gives none of the warning flags that some of the others have given me. And supplemental. The next letter that was discussed is from Spike, the dragon who is Twilight's librarian assistant, and presumably the one who transported the letters to her. Dear Twilight Sparkle, I miss you a lot. It feels like it's been a lifetime since the last time I saw you. I knew it was a bad idea to let Discord free, and now you're all alone somewhere where we can't help you. I know it's gonna be hard, but I don't want you to worry about me, okay? I know you will anyway, because you're nice like that, but I want you to know right now that the library will be exactly the way you left it. The girls have all been amazing to me also. They've been helping out in their own special ways, plus I'm getting to spend time with Rarity, which is always a plus. But I'd rather have you back, Twilight, your family. I just wish you were back home and everything went back to the way it was before, you know? I really hope that this letter reaches you. Luna said that she would try to track the letter as it is sent to try and find you, but I honestly don't know if that'll work though. The letter travels instantly to whomever I send it to, but then again, this is Luna we're talking about. If any pony could do it, it would be her. Or, well, her or you. I will ask if we can send more letters later, if she's able to follow this one even for a bit, then it might give her a better idea on where to look. If we send more, she might learn more. Wherever you are, just hold on a little bit longer, okay? Your number one assistant, Spike. 1. After speaking with Twilight, it was shared that Spike has a romantic intention for Rarity, though the age difference makes the relationship unlikely. The species difference is for the most part a non-issue, as Twilight mentioned in a previous discussion with Private Jenkins. 2. This kind of raises a troubling thought, as we are in no condition at this time to entertain visitors from an apparently peaceful third party in the middle of our war. 3. If we can further document these occurrences as they happen, we might gain a better understanding of how this dragon fire works. The natural downside is that every message sent would be one message closer to Earth's location being compromised. A Kendrick Supplemental It should be apparent to most readers and observers of this material that the person who wrote this is a juvenile. He's clearly attached to Twilight. And supplemental. The next letter comes from Shining Armor and Cadence, Twilight's brother and sister-in-law, who are also now rulers to a neighboring nation of Twilights. As Cadence's described powers are something we are quite concerned with, 
This letter has been earmarked for further scrutiny to try and glean any character tells that might aid us in further interactions. Also, the icon affixed to this letter wasn't a brass horseshoe, but what appears to be a flawless diamond, cut into the shape of a heart. Dear Twilight, if the introduction didn't really give it away, this is your brother writing. Luna invited Cadence and me to help out around Cantalat while she and Celestia continue to search for you, and she also explained what happened with Discord. I want to say that I'm not really worried one bit. You're the one who faced down Nightmare Noon in an Ursa Minor, plus Chrysalis and the Changelings, in Discord not once, but twice. Your mastery of magic is unrivaled, and I am certain that you'll find your way back to us. I'm afraid I've never been that good of a liar, Twilight. I've dedicated my life to protecting the princesses and every pony under them, and especially you. It makes my blood boil that this happened to you, even though it was the princess's decision in the end, and from what I hear, I couldn't have prevented it even if I had been there. It also terrifies me that this is something that I can't fix like a big brother should, that I can't protect you from whatever things you see there. If there was the slight chance of success, I'd rally the guard and march through Tartarus to find you. I wouldn't have to order them either, you might not know it, but every guard's pony knows you, by reputation at the minimum. You've helped save Equestria countless times before, and every last one of them would volunteer to scour the stars and the darkness in between to find you again. I know what you're doing right now, Twilight. You've been shrugging bashfully and saying something like, Oh, it was nothing. Don't. You're a true hero to us all, and to me as well. I'm... I think I'm gonna turn in the letter over to Dear Cadence before I do anything further to destroy my strong big brother image any further. Twilight, I know we usually do our greeting whenever we converse, but I would forgive you if you did not take this time. I imagine that you would look rather silly doing a little shake to a letter. I hope that I managed to make you smile, as I'm afraid that's all I can do with this letter. I can scarcely imagine what you might be going through right now, but I can feel your heart, Twilight. It's faint, and it's far away, but I can still feel you. I don't think I can sense where you are with my power, but it fills me with joy to know that wherever you are, you found some degree in comfort, if not happiness. I hope that the knowledge that we continue to search for you adds the happiness to your heart as well. And, I'm not quite certain, but I could have sworn I felt something tugging on your heartstrings recently. I obviously don't know the circumstances, but I'm overjoyed that someone that isn't a book has found at least a small amount of space in your heart. To see such a thing blossoming in someone I know so well is, well, it's a beautiful thing, Twilight. Perhaps when you return, you and I can go spend a day at the spa and you can tell me all about him, or her. Also, don't forget your breathing exercises. I know how worked up you can get when you're all excited. No pony likes a hysterical mare, and also don't grumble and scowl, no pony likes a grump either. Though you are rather cute when you're embarrassed. Oh, and don't worry about Shiny, I haven't told him a thing. I imagine if I did, his brotherly indignation would somehow bridge the gap of space and time just so he could threaten bodily injury on your special sub pony. He's just a wee bit overprotective, but you know that already. Oh dear, I'm <laughs> rambling now, aren't I? I suppose I should close things up before I have to fetch another piece of paper. My strongest advice to you, Twilight, is to cherish the things that bring you joy, wherever you are. And remember, that we will find you no matter what. Never forget that, alright? Sincerely yours, Shining Armor, Captain of the Guard, Prince of the Crystal Empire. Mia Mare Cadenza, Princess of the Crystal Empire, Guardian of the Crystal Heart. 1. Twilight had mentioned the changelings in passing, but has never really elaborated on her experience with them. If there was some sort of invasion then that might explain her reluctance to discuss it, perhaps with this letter we can better frame our questions to approach it more gently. 2. Tartarus. According to Twilight, it's a prison where only the truly evil are kept. As we can neither confirm or refute this or their measure of evil, this explanation will have to suffice. 3. She was doing just that as she read the letter. 4. This raises a major security concern, especially considering the potential fate Twilight might face when she's transferred to a less hospitable holding location. If this is accurate, Cadence can detect Twilight's emotional state regardless of the distance. If she were abused in any way, then any first contact with Twilight's people would no doubt be colored in such a way that peaceful cooperation would be impossible. 5. Ugh. <sighs> Bloody hell, what started as something akin to a non-malicious prank by Jenkins to get Twilight's mind off of Valen's aggressive testing procedures seemed to have blossomed into a ticking time bomb. If this is accurate, then there's some truth to Jenkins ribbing Twilight, and Harris still doesn't know about it. We've gotta get this straightened out before it goes on any further. I, 
I don't want to see what Twilight would do when she finds out none of it was real after she decides to act on it. 6. Immediately after reading this, Twilight performed said breathing exercise. It appears to be a simple breathe in, breathe out exercise that takes approximately 5 seconds per cycle to complete. 7. She was grumbling and scowling after reading the grumble part. 8. She is absolutely adorable when she's embarrassed. 9. Miyamori Cadenza is apparently Cadence's full name, as Cadence is just a nickname. A Kendrick Supplemental. As this is a two-part letter from two separate persons, this evaluation here will be broken up accordingly. Shining Armor appears to be honest through his writing, judging by spacing, precision, and paper pressure when he was getting to his fears. He is completely honest about his worry for Twilight. For all of Twilight's peculiarities and quirks, her brother seems to be well-adjusted. Princess Cadence is definitely not what I was expecting. I mean, from the materials that Kim and Joel provided me, I was expecting something akin to a chess master with powers of emotion bordering on mind control. I see absolutely no indications of such a manipulator in either how the text was written or the context of the letter itself. I mean, she seems just as about as benign as a meddling but welcoming friends, which if you read between the lines of Twilight's descriptions, that's exactly how she seems. Of course, Kim and Joel do have a very valid point. Those with power that have a tendency to use it get what they want. It's not beyond the realm of possibility that Cadence acts this way to someone she truly cares about for a while, keeping the common folk under an iron boot. I just, I don't get that feeling from the letter, but I mean, it's just a letter. For all we know, she had someone else dictate it for her, and this wasn't really her handwriting. And supplemental. The next letter is believed to be from Princess Celestia. This assumption is based on the icon attached to the clip, which is that of a many-pointed star and is made entirely of pure gold. Twilight also asserts that it is her handwriting. I... I'm so sorry. McKendrick Supplemental. So much is said in those four little words. So much more is said in the words that didn't make it onto the page. The writing style was slanted and almost mashed together with very little letter or word spacing. Combine this with the chemical analysis of the paper sheer that found traces of what appear to be tears only adds evidence to the theory. Further evidence is provided by the paper pressure. Analysis shows that the other papers were stacked on top of this one and were written upon before this final sheet was chosen for the letter. As we did not want to show too many of our tricks to Twilight, we kept all this information confidential. What tells me is that Celestia is devastated by what happened and is likely still in an extremely fragile emotional state. If Twilight's reports are accurate as to her power, I imagine if Cadence were to report the unicorn's heart dying out, then Celestia might just show up on our solar system and toss the Earth out of orbit to let all of humanity freeze. We'll just have to tread lightly. Very, very lightly. And supplemental. The next letter is written by Luna, and is marked with a clip icon that consists of a pitch black circular base made of an as yet unidentified metal, with a crescent moon in the center that is made of white marble. To Twilight Sparkle. I pray that this letter reaches you in good health, as we are all in fear for your safety even now. Cadence assures to us that you are well, wherever you are, and Discord also asserts your safety as well, though I don't trust them, not one bit. Discord has been contained, at least for now. A prison has been constructed and staffed outside of Ponyville with the express purpose of preventing his escape, as well as protecting the secret of his freedom from the public. It is an imperfection solution, I will grant you, but it's the only solution that we do have. Please, do not criticize yourself over the events that have transpired, Twilight. No one could have predicted Discord's actions, and no one blames you for attempting to complete Discord's challenge and save your friends from the trouble. It is simply more evidence of your bravery and willingness to volunteer in my eyes, no matter what the results are. I continue to search the skies for any sign of your presence, though I fear it will be a long and arduous process. When Pinkie Pie contacted me with the idea of sending you a message through Dragonfire, I must admit I felt quite foolish of not thinking of it at first. I mean, thousands of years of wisdom. And the best suggestion I get is from Pinkie Pie, of all ponies. I will attempt to track this message and the others that are sent to get a better fix on your current position. If I am able to find your current location, I will have another message sent beforehand before I come to collect you. Worry not, dear Twilight, I will be coming to collect you as soon as I can. Until then, stay strong, my friend. Princess Luna, Lady Lunar, Guardian of the Night, your loyal friend. 1. This is a rather disconcerting piece of information. We have been under the impression that Twilight had been, for a lack of a better phrase, dumped here and forgotten so Discord could do whatever he does without fear of reprisal. 
that he was actively monitoring Twilight's health and relaying it to her rulers, and combined with the fact that he could, in theory, take her back there at any time or send more of her people to her location, is even more distressing. 2. If Discord has been contained, then that likely means that all available resources are being directed to find Twilight. It may be the best to plan on when they find her, rather than if. 3. Perhaps we should gather the Stardust team and Bradford together to actually iron out a first contact scenario that doesn't involve copious amounts of guns. This is clearly a statement of intent, and I'd rather not piss off the pseudo-deity when she comes to claim the friends that she'd lost. McKentrick Supplemental This was quite possibly the least informative set of handwriting samples I can imagine. It's beautiful script and handwriting, I'll grant you that, but there's so little variance in any of the traditional handwriting markers that there's really no way to tell what she was thinking as she wrote it. Character and word spacing is completely uniform throughout the entire letter, and the characters themselves are so exact that I almost mistook it for typeface. The only conclusion that I can grasp is whoever wrote this has been writing for a very long time, and they have a very good grasp on keeping their emotions from bleeding into their work. And supplemental. This last letter is written by Pinkie Pie, and like the few first letters, has the standard clip icon. Also, I have no idea how she managed it, but I looked away as Twilight opened the letter, and when I looked back there, there were several baked goods on her table. Twilight explained that they were included in the scroll and that they were for us. How does one include frosted cupcakes in a scroll without getting any frosting everywhere? And how did she know the exact number of people involved in the Stardust Project as well as our preferences? Valen Supplemental I was watching in the observation room when she opened up the letter. I saw it with my own two eyes, and I have no idea what happened. It was like looking at an M.C. Escher painting in motion. And supplemental. Regardless, Twilight's starting the letter now. Dear Twilight Sparkle, Illyrium. Sincerely, Pinkie Pie.